Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCSE Chemistry Matter and Mixtures. So in this unit we're mainly going to be looking at how to separate different substances. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over on my website you can download my notes and other resources. Okay, so there are three states of matter, and any substance on Earth can exist in one of these three states, depending on their temperature and pressure. So the first state of matter is a solid. And in a solid, all of the particles are arranged in these fixed rows. And we can call these fixed rows a lattice. So this word lattice just means it has a regular structure, it has a set shape. Between these particles, there are strong forces of attraction. And these forces are really hard to overcome, so the solid stays really fixed together. The particles also have a very low amount of energy, but they're only really vibrating from side to side. The next state of matter is a liquid. Now liquids have a random arrangement, so the particles don't really follow any shape or any structure. They can flow, they can move about, they kind of do what they want. They have a little bit more energy than a solid, so these particles are beginning to move a bit faster and a bit more. And then like I said a second ago, they can flow. The last state of matter is a gas. Now gases have no shape, and this is because the particles have really low forces of attraction. There's nothing really holding these particles together and they've got lots of energy to be completely free moving. So I said anything can be in any of these three states depending on their temperature or pressure. And we have special names for when things go between states. If something moves from a solid to a liquid, we call that melting. And then if it goes from a liquid to a gas, it's called boiling. If we go from a gas back down to a liquid, it's called condensing. And then from a liquid to a solid, it's called freezing. Now in some special cases, we can go right from a solid all the way up to a gas, skipping the liquid stage. And this is called sublimation. And then in a similar way, we can go from a gas all the way to a solid with skipping the liquid. And this is called deposition. So the word pure means made up of one thing. Now we use this word quite a lot, both in chemistry and outside. So a good example is on orange juice. We say that orange juice is pure, and this is technically correct. It's only made up of orange juice. They've not added anything else. But in chemistry, we need to be a lot more specific. We need to say it's only made up of one element or compound. So instead of saying one thing, we're being a lot more specific and saying an element or a compound. A mixture is then lots of substances all mixed together, but not bonded. They're just existing together. Okay, so this is a graph to show the time and temperature as something changes state. So we begin heating the substance up and giving it energy, so the temperature increases. This flat line is where a state change is happening, and the temperature doesn't increase because it uses the energy we give it to change its state. Once it's changed state, it then continues to get hotter. So this flat line in the middle is the one we're interested in, the state change. So every substance in the world has a melting and boiling point. Pure substances have a fixed number, so this is the number that they melt and boil at. Now mixtures or impure substances melt over a range of temperatures. They don't just start and end at the same temperature. They start at one and end at the other. And this is because there are lots of different things melting at different times. So the line isn't flat like a pure substance. It is slightly slanted to show this range. So sometimes if we have a mixture, we want to separate them out into their pure substances. And one way we can do this is through filtration. And this separates an insoluble solid from a liquid. So this means a solid that does not dissolve. So the idea is that we pour our mixture in the top of this funnel. And this is lined with filter paper. Now the insoluble solid is too big to fit through the holes in the filter paper. So it stays at the top and is collected as the residue. The liquid then falls through the paper and goes into a flask where it's collected as the filtrate. So now we have the pure liquid without any of the solid in it. Another method is then crystallisation. And this separates a soluble solid from a liquid, so a solid that is dissolved. Now filtration won't work in this case. Because the solid is dissolved, it will just pass straight through the gaps. So instead we heat it up until the liquid begins to evaporate, leaving the solid behind as crystals. Now chromatography is used to separate and identify substances. 
So we start with a sheet of chromatography paper and we draw spots of the mixture on the bottom line. Now this bottom line is called the origin line. We then dip the bottom of the chromatography paper in a solvent. The solvent will move up the chromatography paper and drag the mixtures with it. Now each mixture is soluble in the solvent for a different amount of time. So each mixture is dragged up a different amount of paper. When it is dissolved in the solvent, we call this the mobile phase. And then when it is stuck to the paper and not moving, it's called the stationary phase. So the solvent keeps moving up the paper until we get to the top and then we draw another line and this is called the solvent front. And this is basically just our indication of where the solvent reached to on the paper. Now it's really important that these lines are drawn in pencil so that they don't dissolve in the solvent just like the mixture. We can then calculate the RF values of each substance. Every substance will have a different RF value. So we can calculate the RF value by dividing the substance over the solvent. And what I mean by this is how much each one moved. So how far the substance or the mixture moved up the paper and how far the solvent reached. And now this RF value will never be bigger than one because if it is bigger than one, it means it moved right off of the paper. So we've spoken about separating the substances. They've separated out as they dissolved. But I also said we can use them to identify substances. If we put a few different mixtures on the origin line to separate them out, we can see if any of the mixtures in them move to the same place, just like these two red spots. Because they're next to each other, it means they're the exact same substance. The last separation method is called distillation, and this separates mixtures of liquids. Now we have two types, simple distillation and fractional. We'll look at simple distillation first. So we have the mixture at the bottom in this flask. Now if we heat the mixture up, it will rise as it turns into a gas. This will then move down this tube through a condenser. And now the condenser's job is to cool it back down into a liquid. And then it's collected in a flask at the bottom. Now this is really good, but it only works with liquids with really different boiling points, as one has to stay in this flask over here and not boil at all. Now if we've got a mixture of liquids with really similar boiling points, we have to use fractional distillation. Now the same kind of idea happens, we're still heating the liquid so it rises and then we collect it at the bottom in flasks, but this time we're going to use a fractionating column. And this is going to mean that any liquid that evaporates before it's supposed to will fall back down into the original flask. This is because at the top, further away from the heat source, is really cold, so unless the liquid is really at its boiling point, it will just fall back down because it's not hot enough yet. Now for humans to drink water, it has to be potable. And this means safe to drink. And there are three stages that you need to know about to make water potable. The first stage is sedimentation. And this is basically when we just leave the water and let all of the big bits float to the bottom. So any big leaves, any clumps of mud or rock, they just fall to the bottom so they're easier to remove. Stage two is filtration. And this is where we filter the water to remove any finer bits, any really small particles of mud or other debris. Third and final stage is chlorination. Now chlorine is a toxic chemical and we put this in the water to remove any pathogens or microorganisms. Now these are so small we cannot see them, so the only way to remove them is to use chlorine. If this video helped with your chemistry revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.